when we use flex or grid, there are certain things that happen. If you do display flex, you get columns, right? But there's actually a few other things that happen that might be catching you off guard. There's behaviors that change away from the defaults that a lot of people aren't aware of. And in this video, I wanna look at what a few of those are. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, I help you fall in love with CSS, and if not fall in love with it, at least be a little bit less frustrated by it. And one of those things with CSS that sometimes catches people off guard is when things don't behave the way they think that they should be behaving and don't understand why certain things are changing when they're not expecting them to change. So that's why I wanna look at these differences that can come up with Flex and Grid in this video. These are little things that can catch you off guard, and I've looked in a few of them at the solutions that you can use to overcome them and just better ways to work that will be a little bit easier for you uh, in the long run. And once you understand this and you know that this is the behavior, it becomes very easy to work with them and you can start working in a much more consistent way as well. As one little caveat, some people might go, well, why is the behavior even different in the first place? And I don't actually have an exact answer for that, but these behaviors are different. We need to know that they are so we can work around them and work with it. And they actually work in a way that's a little bit more logical and a little bit easier to understand so in a way it's easier it's just kind of weird that it changes all of a sudden from what we had if you're wondering what I'm talking about it's gonna be a lot easier when we look at the code so let's go and dive in and do just that all right so here we are in VS code and I'm gonna push all this down just so we can work up here and when I save of course it formats it and pushes everything back up um, so what I want to look at is we've created these three cards here and there's nothing too fancy happening with them but there's some annoying behavior. So let's just say, let's go look here really fast. And I have um, this flex and even, actually we don't need the flex class. Let's just do everything on this even columns. And so to do that, what I'm gonna do, let's create that class, even columns. And we can say display of flex, which will make them into columns and they go next to one another. But um, the first thing I'm gonna do is, well, it's, you know, I like working mobile first. So it's small screen sizes. Let's say that these actually have a flex direction or the parent has a flex direction of column. So that means the children become rows. And do you notice something a little different right now than what I originally had? So when I set this up, I said, you know what? I, I wanted it to be set up like this with this, this distance between these cards. And, and that was exactly what I wanted. But then when I come and I do this, an interesting thing happens where that space actually doubles. And there's an interesting reason for this because everybody knows, you know, when you do your display flex or, uh, you, you know, there you go, you, you get columns. And that's the behavior that people know and love. And that's one of the nice things with flex is it, it goes and does that. And just so you know, this won't always make even columns. And just in case you want to know more about that, I do have a card popping up or a link in the description down below. Um, but what we often do is something like this and then we have like a media query, right? So at media or you could come in with the holy albatross even um, And so here I'll do a min width of I'm just gonna do 45 M um, Just so we have a number there basically and my even columns can then get my uh, Flex direction of row. So then if I open my dev tools uh, with responsive mode on When we hit that breakpoint, which I guess we should have made a little bit smaller. Let's try 35 um, oh, I mean 55, I should say. <laughs> there we go, that makes more sense. So when we get to the big screens, we have our columns and we get to here, but we get the giant spacing. So does that mean I should actually just turn off flex completely? Like, no, it's not what you should probably be doing. Um, and I want to explore why this is actually happening. So for now, what I'm actually going to do is turn this off and I'm actually going to I just comment out this display flex for a second and we're going to turn it on and off as we go through this. Um, so I do have an extension installed here called Vizbug, um, which Adam Argyle created. And it has tons of really cool stuff in here. You can do a whole bunch of simulations and sort of de visually debug your CSS. Uh, the link to it is in the description if you want to add it. And uh, I'm going to choose this guy right here, which is my margins one. And what that means is I can click on something and see the margins of it. So, you know, that's kind of cool, but you can also, uh, so if I click on this, I can see the margin on the top and the bottom there, and we have 32 and 32. But this one also has 32 and 32, and those are collapsing margins. Those margins have collapsed into one another. Huh, and just why they're 32 is down here on my example, I have a margin block of two rem. So block is your margin top and your margin bottom. It's a logical property. 
And so I have this two rem top and bottom, so it adds up to 32 pixels on both of them. And the margins between these are collapsing. So if I push shift and I click on both, you can actually see that it fills it in like doubly because those margins have collapsed into one another. And then what happens when these become flex items rather than just regular block level containers is those no longer collapse. So let's go take a look and we'll refresh Vizbug here. And now when I look at that, look at that, they're not collapsing margins anymore. And this is something that stands out a little bit more when you do a display of grid on something. So we'll leave my even columns now, but we're gonna switch this. Let's just turn off my Vizbug. And we'll switch this to grid um, because this happens all the time where you don't have anything on it. You have them like that, you know, you have your items. And then as soon as you do a display of grid, the spacing on everything doubles because the margins are no longer collapsing. You see this, if you have something that has paragraphs that becomes a grid parent, and those paragraphs become grid items, you always see it where all of a sudden your paragraphs become double spaced. Um, and if you'd, if you'd would like to know more about collapsing margins, I've gone deeper into how they work. Um, so if you'd like a more in-depth video where I just explore margins in all their glory or just specifically on uh, collapsing margins, I've linked that one down below. And once again, there should be a card popping up. We've got a lot of cards on this video. Um, but the, yeah, so uh, the flex direction won't do anything, but yeah, now we have these non-collapsing margins right there. So it spaces it out twice as much. And my recommendation for both situations would be not, if, if you have a grid or flex parent, would be not to space things out at all with margins. <laughs> and maybe you might be going, well, why, why would you want to do that, Kevin? That seems a little strange. Um, so let's go find that example one again, my, my, um, right here. And I'm gonna put my margin, we'll just turn it off, which should make it zero, because these are divs. Divs by default don't have a margin on them. And there we go, they shrink away and they're all glued together. And the reason I would recommend not dealing, not worrying about that is because you can then come in and say gap. You can say gap 1M, 2M, or in this case it was two. So let's go with, we had two rem, so I can stick with two. But now I know my gap is actually two. And I'm not dividing my old margin by one, I'm just setting gap of two. And that means if I do change the direction, so we can do a grid auto flow of column instead. And now I know the gap this way is two. Or if we did it before, like we had with our flex, so let's just delete all of this. Uh, we can say our display is flex. And then we'll come in with, we'll turn this back on and we'll turn this back on. So now I get this behavior again where it's stacking and then at the large screens it becomes columns and right now it's all glued together. And that's perfect because this means I can be nice and consistent because what I can do is here say gap is to rem. And now the nice thing with gap is when the flex direction or the grid auto flow or however you're doing it, if you have a grid that's doing multiple rows and columns, in all of these situations the gap vertically here is two and when it goes this way and they actually go next to one another, now my gap between them that way is becoming two. And this is super, super cool and handy. And I'm just gonna turn off this bug because I don't actually need it now. So let's turn you off. Um, and yeah, so it, it can become really, really handy in getting consistency and all of that. And that's one of the big things that a lot of people don't seem to realize when they use flex or grid is that the margins no longer collapse. And there's another stage to this collapsing margins as well. And so let's turn off uh, what am I, let's, let, we'll stay right here. This is my H2. What I'm going to say is dot, um, the, the headings have a, a padding on them right now. So let's take that, um, padding off and you see it less if you have backgrounds, but let's turn off my padding for a second. And even though, um, my example has the padding off, notice how we have a space on top here. And that space there is coming because of this being a display flex. So the parent is a display flex. The items inside become flex items. If the parent wasn't a display flex or a display grid, the margin of the child collapses with the margin of the parent. And it actually, it's creating gaps between them, even though this margin is coming from the H2 here, or actually in this case, it's probably all the H2, but the paragraphs at the bottom will be bleeding out the bottom too. And just to show you, that's what's happening. <laughs> Let's open up that viz bug that I said we don't need anymore. Uh, select my margins and you can see that that margin is coming from here or this margin it's actually coming from my h2 or my paragraph so those margins are spilling out of their parent because the parent itself if we can if we can get it can i get it i don't think i can click on it um, but the parent itself doesn't have a margin on it it's spilling out but when we change something to be a flex container or a grid container 
the margins this what it's effectively doing is creating a new formatting context and that means that the margins are no longer collapsing and because we're creating a new formatting context it means that the, the margins of what's inside won't spill outside of it and just really quickly collapsing margins only happen on the top and the bottom not on the left and the right um so yeah just to throw that out there um, as a little extra so that's one of those really important things that sometimes causes weird layout shifts when you're not expecting them to is things margins behave differently when we have a block element or when we have flex and grid items and this is also another thing that's very different um, or interesting i guess we should say um, when we have a we'll talk about flex because flex and grid formatting contexts are very very similar um, and what i mean by a flex formatting context, when we do a display of flex, the children are becoming flex items. And that actually means if I come on one of these children, so let's say dot even columns, let's select all of them. We'll go star and let's do a display of inline. Nothing, nothing will change. It's literally exactly the same. Or if I made that block, nothing will change. And that's because once, and the parent is a display flex, these children, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you throw a display none on here, it matters because it takes them out of the flow. Um, but the display inline, a display block, a display inline block, they don't change anything. They don't, they're not having an impact on them because they're flex items and they're behaving like flex items. Uh, so, and one of those things is the way the collapsing margins works with your flex items and just their overall behaviors and all of that, the same with your grid items. So if you ever are trying to get something to behave in a certain way and you're trying to change the display of it when it's a flex or grid item and you're getting frustrated, this is why you can't make that change. It's that, that sort of goes out the window a little bit with those. And another thing that's important here is that even if something doesn't have a div around it, so let's just say I come here and I just put some text, here is some text, this actually becomes a flex item, even though there's no element there. So if I hit save, that's a new column and it's behaving like a column. That gap is being applied to it. Anything that would be, now I can't select it. I have no way like this, like if we said background, background, red, important, it's not gonna select it because it's not actually an element that's there to be selected. It's just some, a string of text, but it will be treated like a flex item as far as the layout goes. So it's going to get its own column and do its own flexy things, even though it's not an element. This is hopefully something you don't run into very often, but it is important to know. And once again, this is the same for grid where something will become, let's just throw this over to grid. Um, just so you can see like the gap is, the gap's still applying there. It's still doing its grid things. And if we, let's do the, uh, grid grid auto flow of column just so we can see and it's going to get thrown on there or maybe we could even do grid auto row of 100 pixels and uh, rows not row and 100 is way too small let's do 1000 so it's super huge so that has a lot of space well guess what even though this is just a string of text it has that thousand pixels uh, so it's not something I can select. I wouldn't try and take advantage of this. It's just so if ever you do have something like that, so you understand what's actually going on with it and some important differences with when we have something that is display grid or display flex and the changes that it could make uh, to what you're working on. There are a few other implications as well about when we're doing all of this, but I think most people know what those ones are and they work with those all the time. So um, this video is more about the ones that aren't covered too often. And if you found this interesting, but you were wondering why I would choose a grid over flex just to make even columns, that video is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to Stuart, Randy, and Johnny for being my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.